In the second episode of this brush testing series, we are going to be taking a look at the ProArt ProLink Plus 007 size 10 in the round. And by the way, the better name for this series is definitely required. So if you can think of a better title than just the brushing testing series, then do let me know in the comments. So this is the reason why I chose this as my second brush to test is because this is my workhorse. This is the brush I do all the swatches on this channel and any kind of swatches I do. I usually do this. And if I'm doing Patreon painting, I use this brush. I use this all the time this is my default brush and i kind of don't know any others i know i know the princeton one and i know what it can do but i don't do that much of what it's good at yet and so yeah this is my default brush I, so i thought it'd be good for both of us to get to know this brush and how it behaves so that we can compare it with other brush i'm not wanting to replace this brush though this is just for reference and for people who are interested in this brush why i would pick this brush as you can imagine i use this a lot because it's for everything that we have on this channel is usually done by this brush i usually manage to do an entire year of this channel swatching with one brush and then at the end of the year the tip might get a little bit weird like a tiny bit and then i will replace it so that is a huge amount that it can do it's one of those brushes where it's no it's not excellent at any particular thing but it has endurance and that's great for my swatching. It might not be for what you're looking for, but for me, for doing all the swatching on this channel, it is a perfect brush and it's affordable, it's economical. It's, I, I just really, really like this brush. So let's take a look at the tip. As you can see, it doesn't have this, I, I have been using for a while, but it doesn't have the finest of tips. Let's get it wet. It's definitely a round brush rather than a pointy brush. Is, is pointy brush a technical word? But for what I need it for with swatching, it's just perfect. And the bristle length is 26 millimeters, same as the Princeton Heritage. And the width is, well, the diameter is 6.8. So it's a little bit wider and it definitely doesn't do as a thinner point as the Princeton Heritage, but I don't need that in a swatching card. So that's fine. And then the length is 23 centimeters, which for me is perfect. I don't get tired of using this brush and like my hand doesn't get tired of using this brush and it is really well balanced. It doesn't feel awkward at any point in holding this brush. It is made with synthetic sable and I get this from Jackson's. Now, because it's available in Jackson's, I get this impression that anything that's available in Jackson's is available worldwide. Well, it technically is in that they will ship worldwide, but I didn't realize, even though it says Proline Pro Art, Pro Art Proline Plus 007 England, I didn't realize that it wasn't available widely outside the UK, but you can order it from Jackson's and you can get it shipped overseas. Their shipping is pretty reasonable, especially if you don't get paper. If, if it's like things like brushes, it's really good. So it is priced £10.80, which is very reasonable to begin with. And then if you consider it lasts, one of these will last me a whole year of hardcore swatching hundreds of swatches as well as painting hundreds of Patreon paintings. I do about 60 to 70 Patreon paintings every month with the same brush that I do the swatching in this. So I would say that this is good value. It's not the cheapest range. I wouldn't do go for the cheapest range, the Proline range, which has the black bristle. I found that with that one, the paint on the coating on the bristle cracks after a while and i don't find the brush as good quality i think this is a good middle mid between a good value for money and really good quality brush 
it is available from triple zero which i guess is the same as four over zero to size 20 so you can get pretty big brushes as well in terms of water capacity it holds a bit more water than the princeton heritage but obviously it's not a really thirsty soaked in paint kind of brush which is great for me because for swatching i don't want it too wet so that's great in terms of water release so it's not the best you can see how uneven the water load is so if you're moving across it's quite light and then once you lift that it drops a lot of water but that's okay for me because i don't do much up and down action on my swatches if you do do a lot of up and down actions like you do botanical stuff then i wouldn't recommend this brush though in terms of Max Swiss, it's pretty wide, um, but you can see the edge is dry and that's a sign that it's a more closer to a drying, drier brush than a really soaked wet brush. Belly Jerk, I'm still quite not sure what it <laughs> shows. Do let me know in the comments down below if you find a belly drag interesting and useful and if you have any idea of what that will tell us above something else. In terms of thin line, let's compare it with the Princeton Heritage. This is Princeton Heritage. This is Pro Art. You can see how much thicker this line is. But also, it's much better at doing consistent longer lines. But again, this will be much better for fur than this will be for fur. Like, you can't get nice fine lines at all with this brush. In terms of lift, because it doesn't have that thick, uh, that thin point, and it's a bad water low. So this was the brush I was trying to do the Yao Cheng class with, and you can see why I was struggling so much. It doesn't give you a nice fine point, and it gets messy like this. So one of the tips I have for anybody that is struggling with brush is if you're struggling to get the effect that your teacher's getting, if you're taking a course, then it's probably the brush. So get one of the brushes that your teacher uses and you'll probably be able to get the effect you want. In terms of snake, actually, I really like how snake is. It's partly, I can't give you a entirely scientific, like brand new to every brush, and like even level of experience because this is my workhorse brush um i know how to use this brush really really well so it's really easy for me to get nice smooth edges it has a nice spring to it it doesn't at the moment because um it's wet <laughs> so as a dry brush can you hear this it's got a pretty good snap to it and the brush stays pretty together makes it really easy for me to do snaking without any kind of weird angly corners in terms of flat wash you do need to dip into your paint a few times to cover this area and i mention that now because we will see brushes that can do this whole area in one load so for comparison yeah this required a few load but not as many as the Princeton Heritage. In terms of gradation, I'm very used to doing the gradation with this brush. So yeah, you can get really good gradation out of it. In terms of lifting, it lifts really well because it's got a stronger bounce. You can get a little bit more off than the Princeton Heritage. You, you, with the Princeton Heritage, you didn't have this lighter area here so it's definitely a firmer bouncier brush than the princeton heritage and in terms of dashes it's not very good at it because it's not got the fine tip that you need to do nice thin dashes it's more of if the princeton heritage was a long grain rice this is more of a short grain rice that's it for pro art pro lean plus it it's it will always be my workhorse because it's very practical for swatching. If you do do a lot of swatching, I can definitely recommend this. I wouldn't recommend this for any detailed work though, or botanical work like this, where you are putting the brush up and down on the paper a lot. 
because the water load isn't great but as a workhorse go-to kind of brush this is my favorite i'm open to changing but i do still have a huge stock of this brush because i just buy a few back up which i don't know why because i know that this one brush will last me a whole year but i still have this anxiety about not having enough brush so i have a few of these brush in lots of different sizes this was the first brush that i bought like a full set as in full set of the brushes i wanted to use not like a full range of the entire range but this was the first one i'm really glad i chose this because it's a great brush that works for me i hope that was useful to you and interesting to you thank you so much for watching this in the next video we're going to be doing the pro art connoisseur series which is a brush i've never tried before from a brand that i'm obviously very familiar with so it'd be really interesting do join me for that one and i will see you in the next episode bye